My first memory is Couching Bay, where we lived in a, where the Fisherman's Wharf is. There's a reserve right next. And, um, I remember me and my sister going down the beach and she says, Ikla. She says, let's go. And I said, ah, awa. Dad said, no. Dad told us to stay near the cabin. And my sister said, let's go. Dig clams for Dad. <coughs> um, I remember digging clams, and I it was probably really, really small little baby clams that we dug, but we got a little half a pot full. And my sister went in the cabin, and she, she made fire, and she cooked those clams. And she, I was only like uh, maybe four, and she was six. You know, we were just little. And um, I remember my dad crying when he got home. And I felt bad because he was crying. We made him cry. But he was so happy that we did that for him, to have his supper ready when he got home from, from logging, right at, right at the booming grounds in Couching Bay. And um, it was, you know, something that we lived on. It was the, the seafood. And we were able to do that for him. And that's my memory of him and uh, my sister and how she because she's two years older than me she was supposed to look after me and watch over me but we were always getting into trouble you know and um and we used to walk there like couch and bay there was a long beach there but it's dread today it's dredged mm -hmm. because of the fishermen's and um <clears throat> She, we'd go just like, um, like the, there's a steep, like in the forest there, behind our cabins, we'd go walk up and we'd uh, pick salmon berries or the wild strawberries or the wild blackberries. That was our treat, mm -hmm. that we didn't, we didn't have candy or, or anything. Uh, the dried clams was our candy or the dried, Salmon roll was our treat. We'd go and break a piece. It was the salmon roll was smoked. It was hanging behind a wood stove. We'd go and um, break us. It was really, really hard, but we'd break a piece and we'd keep it in our mouth, and that was our candy. And um, salmon roll was hard to get because not too many of our salmon had, you know, the the females didn't have too much. My dad says, don't finish my, my eggs. You know, and he told us not to have too much of it. But we loved it so much, and that was our treat. And um, that's my, my memory as a child, is uh, everything that we had. And um, we didn't have, we didn't have um, toys. And I remember getting my auntie's big towel, bath towel, and I rolled it. And I tied a string around to make a head. And that was my doll. I made my own doll. And me and my sister was playing. And, um, you know, that we had to make our own toys, like a skipping rope, like play with a skipping rope. And me and her would be playing in, in Couching Bay. And, and <clears throat> Uh, Dad had a, a, a chicken coop behind the house. We had chickens, mm -hmm. and that was our, our chores to let the chickens out during the day, and they'd be let them free. I remember um, in the evening, we'd feed the chickens in the morning outside and get them out of the chicken coop, and then, then we'd go in and get their eggs. And then we'd take it in the house. And, um, in the evening, we had to get the chickens all back in, and uh, so they're safe at night. <clears throat> so we had to spread uh, the, 
chicken feed in this chicken coop so and try and get them all back in there at night. And then um, we'd have a treat once in a while. Dad would um, kill one of the chickens and Dad would say, go and get the, the hen. He'd pick one and he'd say, go catch it. Me and my sister would be running and we'd be having fun, you know. And as a child, you, you don't think it's, you know, something horrible, you know, but that was our, that was our food. Malahat is uh, where I was born. I have no memory of, because I was just newborn, and um, I don't know how long Dad stayed there, but there's, that was a booming ground right there. You could still see the pilings there. Um, that's where he was logging, and then the cabin was just right at that point where I was born. There was no doctor for some people say it was about three days after when the doctor came and checked on me and my mother. And uh, apparently I was, I was fine, I guess. <laughs> you know, with the help of my grandmother, you know, and, um, they, they helped my mother deliver me. And, and um, my my aunts and my dad's aunt and uncles are all in this one nation here. So, um, they all help look after us. Yeah. All the family okay. came together and helped. And everybody, I, I probably could imagine my grandfather traveling from the Couchin River to the Malahat and proposed to my grandmother. And that's how things were years ago, is um, the travel and um, um, propose. And that's how everyone traveled in those days, was by canoe. And uh, there was a very few families that uh, had the horse and buggy to, to get around in those days. And this was in 1944, when I was born. Born on May the 1st. If I was born on April, last day of April, I would have been called May, April, not May. <laughs> it's very important to me because this is my home. Uh, uh, I remember my granduncle, he used to walk to, to um, Plum Plumalit, almost come to visit my dad. And he, I remember him asking my dad, you better come home now. You better move home and we'll, we'll build a house for you. I remember that. And uh, he always hitchhiked. And uh, that one evening, me and my sister went out to get some wood for, the, for our fire for the evening, for the night. And we were standing outside and we seen something white coming from the road really bright white, like almost fluorescent white, bright. <clears throat> we got so scared, we ran in the house. We dropped our wood and we ran in and said, Dad, there's something out there. We got so terrified, you know. And he just lit a candle and said, it's okay. And then the next day, the news came that um, his uncle passed away, and by the couch and by the bridge in Duncan, that he was, I don't know, he was run over or something, but he always hitchhiked. He was from here in Malahat. He always walked, hitchhiked to go visit family. I remember that part, and it was so sad, because he used to come and visit us all the time. That was a sad part. Yeah. That's my memories of Malahat. It's all one family. Um, my grandmother's sister and brothers today is all just one, still one family here in the Malahat. And this is, I always say it's my home. I always say that um, the flats, it's a uh, 
It's pronounced clum clum a lit, but it's clum clum a lit. Clum 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 a lit. It's, that's my childhood memories of Couch and Bay and, and clum clum a lit. And, um, my auntie, she, she took care of us, and my cousin Evelyn and Auntie Hannah took care of us while Dad was at work. To me, it's important because little Josephine is um, my great-granddaughter. And uh, for her, to bring her back home here with me, my family, like four generations, eh? Four generations. I wouldn't never thought, like, 50 years ago, <laughs> 69 years ago. <laughs> They're my whole pride and joy, my family. I love all of them equally. You know. I wish that everyone would love their family and just, just cherish their child, their grandchildren, their brothers and sisters. They gotta just love one another, not hate one another. I see so many families hating when their parents pass away. They, they break up and just want to be better than their siblings. It's not the way to be. I wish they'd just, just stay together. That's what I want for my family, is to my daughter and my sons to just be one, like not overpowering the other. I want them to just stay together and love one another and teach my grandchildren to love one another and respect each other. That's really, really important respect. Uh, there's so much of the modern technology is uh, damaging our children's brain. Like how we, how I grew up, me and my sister, like with my little doll and my, my, sw my skipping rope, you know. It, that was our, our toys. We didn't have, have nothing even though my father worked. And I remember, remember when dad would get paid, uh, there was only, I don't know how he got a hold of this taxi. The taxi from Duncan would come and pick us up, take us into, into Duncan. We'd go to store, um, we'd go to Cooksila, go to store there. Um, and have get, you know, food, and that was our treat for the, the weekend, you know, we had something really nice to go shopping. We never, never really went to, like, like Walmart today or um, the Superstore. We, we didn't have that in those days. Um, we, um, we didn't have a oh, vehicle. Dad didn't have a vehicle, he, even though he was working every day and get paid every two weeks. Uh, if, we, if we were to go to Victoria, we had to go to the corner where the tennis court is and outside of Plum Plumlets there, there's a tennis court there and that would be our bus stop there. And then we'd catch the Greyhound to go to Victoria to, to go and uh, we had to dress up, had to, uh, we'd say our Sunday clothes, eh? and um, go to Victoria. And uh, at home we'd be wearing jeans and um, just our everyday clothes, but at home, and when we go to town, we'd have to wear our dress and, and dress up and our best. So that was traveling into go to town because no one had a vehicle in those days. I want my family to everyone, not just my family, my only immediate family, yeah. but all of my family, nieces and nephews, grand nieces, grand nephews, to raise their children and with respect and teach them, you know, honor Honor your grandma, your grandpa. Your, honor your aunts and uncles. 
to have an honor when you have a, someone knocking on the door. Honor them. Especially when they walk in the longhouse, they got to have respect. There's no respect today. Like when I was a little child, as a little girl, I had to go sit way up top and stay there. I wasn't allowed to go in and out to go to the washroom. I just lay there and just gradually fall asleep, wake up and dad would say, let's go home now. And uh, it's listening, you gotta use your ears, your eyes, listen, watch. You walk in a longhouse today, everybody's like this, texting or getting their messages or even the people on the floor. That the, there should be no technology in the longhouse. It shouldn't be today. That's not right. That's not our teachings. You don't learn from that technology in the longhouse. That's wrong. So, and remember this. Return to our, our ways of eating. It's uh, so important. The, the seafood the clams, crabs, red snapper. Um, I remember the flounder, catching flounder, couching bay. Dad would tell us to get off the canoe. <coughs> he said, and we had no shoes and we were scared if we get bit by a crab, if we stepped on one. But Dad says, if you step on anything and it's gonna move, you keep your foot on it, don't move it. And he had a spear. And uh, me and my sister start walking, and this, um, something start wiggling under my feet. And I lifted my feet and I screamed. And um, it was a flounder. I, I stepped on a flounder. And um, all you could see was the, the dust in the water when this flounder swam away. And Dad says, I told you to keep your feet on it till I get there. So we, me and my sister started walking again and then as soon as we stepped on one and we were just laughing and giggling because it tickled so much. And Dad got there and he says, okay, as soon as I say go, you lift your feet up and I'll, I'll spear it. And when he was talking to us in our language, he wasn't talking English. We didn't understand one word of English then. Uh-oh. <clears throat> so dad speared the, the flounder. And that, that was our meal, you know, to, to take it home and have flounder. Just, just gut it. It has really tiny little, little gut, you know, below its head. And then he, he washed it and um, just sliced it into pieces and boiled it. It was so delicious. Um, I haven't had that in a long time. <laughs>